morning. I'd like to welcome everybody. Thank you for, oh, now I'm on. Good morning. <laughs> it was green. Good morning, and welcome to our forum this morning on behalf of Kurt Steffens, our church council president who's absent this morning. I will be kind of spearheading this. I'm Angela Wayner, for any of you who do not know me or do not recognize me. I am the church council vice president. And so what will we, we will be discussing this week and next week and then voting on at our next meeting is our budget. So as we had talked about last time, we kind of shifted where it falls and so now it will be here. So I'm gonna just do some quick introductions. We've got Heather Budnick, who is all things financial, which is your formal title? Business manager. And then we have Kate Byrne, who is our treasurer. And so these two will be assisting me because I am not the numbers person. When it comes to counting, I'm fine, but I am not uh, the person who can do all of that. So um, I, with that being said, I think I'm just going to turn it over. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Kate Byrne. I'm going to stand over here. And if I'm in your way, let me know. Um, my name is Kate Byrne. I took over as treasurer this year. And so give me some grace because I am learning. I'm trying to fill Scott's very large shoes, but um, we'll see if I can make that happen. So this morning, I wanted to talk to you all before Heather dives into our budget. She's going to be going through what our different um, our ministries have put together, which I have to admit, in my first year as treasurer here, I was astonished by what our church actually does once we get into this. So those ministries are fantastic, and uh, we owe the people that spearhead those and put all the work into those a lot of things. When you start looking through these budgets, I think you start realizing what it is we actually do here, and it's pretty amazing. But one thing I do want to walk through is something new to a CLC this morning. Well, I'll say it's resurrected in the spirit of the season. So this is the CLC Endowment Fund. So this is something that was actually started before the pandemic and that we've actually been able now, there's a threshold of funds that you're able to start investing and we're excited to announce that we have reached that threshold. So as part of that, we have a few things. I wanna walk through what the endowment fund is, what our needs are for it and how you can get involved and how you can help before um, Heather goes through the, the budget. And I'll try to be quick. If you have more questions about it afterwards, please let me know. But the endowment fund, so this was established to be able to invest some of the funds beyond um, the standard giving that is sent to us. So what happens is we receive these funds, we put them into an investment fund, and we are then able to take out the whatever is gained beyond the principal. And these, op these are applied to anything outside of our regular operating budget. So these are not included into our annual budget. These are funds that are surplus after that that we're able to then support missions through the church. So the way that it works is that there is a committee, the endowment fund committee, which I myself sit on as the representative council. We have one representative pastor, which will be Pastor Tim. And then we also have individuals from the congregation that are voted on to the board that will also help us make those decisions. We do use a... Um, a investment um, firm, essentially, to help us make those choices. And so this is not just me choosing where I would like our money to go, but we do have that guidance there. So that's how we make those decisions. So those contributions come, then we're able to spend the excess of that principal. There are specific things we can spend them on. So these are ministries that are outside of, again, what we budgeted for. These are property expenses that arise that are outside of the budget or things, enhancements that we choose to make that, again, are outside of that budget. Um, and then we also um, are able to spend those on leadership development, such as stewardship. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Seminary. Um, scholarships. There we go. Um, sorry. So seminary scholarships would be something that would apply to that. So then these kinds of requests come to the endowment fund committee and then we get the approval through church council and we also report out to the congregation the amount of money that is being gained from those investments as well as what they're being spent on when we have enough to spend. So as of right now, we have a little over $60,000 that we're able to put into this investment fund, right, which is spectacular. Um, the way that you can help to increase this amount is, of course, by shifting some of your donations, which are tax deductible. So these are listed here. 
Um, if you're at, if you're considering putting Christ Lutheran into your will or into a trust, this is a place that you can earmark this where you specifically designate the fund to go into the endowment fund instead of our regular donations. Um, or what I am looking for, I shouldn't say most importantly, but most immediately at this time, is we need volunteers to um, help with the committee. So this does not require financial investment experience necessarily. I'm not looking for financial advisors only to be on this committee. We're looking for people that might have some knowledge of finances or might have some knowledge or a background even in your personal finances that you understand the concepts, but that you're willing to donate a little bit of time. Um, we're talking about once a month while we get things set up here as we're launching, and then we'll meet once a quarter briefly on a, a Zoom call, so this is not a huge time commitment, but it's an important commitment for the church um, and a really impactful opportunity to give back some of your time. So if you are interested in that, I am taking applications, which I'm sure my inbox will be flooded by the end of this, but my email address is at the end of the presentation here. Um, you can come talk to me at any service or you can track me down through any other member of council as well. Um, and I wanna give Heather plenty of time to talk through our budget, so if you do have questions, Pastor, please. Okay, um, just uh, uh, one extra thing that um, the, uh, on the right-hand side, this uh, committee, it's not just the investing, but this is the group that will get to receive proposals of ideas for things that we can do beyond our regular budget. Uh, in, through, be, and beyond uh, our congregation. So this is also the group that we want folks who have a sense of mission, have a sense of ministry, and have the fun then of saying, ooh, what could we do? Um, and using, again, this interest um, as uh, without touching principle so that this becomes a way of supporting the church that we love forever. This will go on forever, and then we get, this is the committee that gets to help guide that and then help, this, help us figure out how best to use it. Thank you, yes. Any quick questions I can, yes? So uh, in the future, it'll get larger, but with 60,000, any uh, just starting point of how much interest that would be in the first year? I, that's a great question. Yeah, do we have, I heard someone whisper three to 5%, is that? Okay. Yeah, and these are all things that once we get this committee together, we'll be able to review with those advisors, and that's what we'll be able to report back to the congregation. Another good point is that if you are contributing to this kind of a fund, these are things because we're not touching the principal, this is a way to make sure that your donations to CLC continue on as you, um, time passes. What is the amount the principal has to stay at? There's no... The, um, the, the watermark we were looking for was for us to be able to invest it. And it was somewhere between 25 and 50. I think it was 25,000. So we've well exceeded that. Once we invest it and we have this up and running, we never touch principal. So we're, our endowment draws are going to be interest only. Yeah. How can I contribute to this? Can we do through subsplash or anything? Or is it only like wills and things like that. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, I can set that up in Subsplash where you could just pull it down off of the menu and select endowment fund and I will make sure it gets invested there. Mm -hmm. Would this be a non-risk in other words, would the investment be non-risk? In other words, there would be no risk that you would take maybe a lower percentage, but then it would be a non-risk uh, situation where if you go the other way, you're taking a lot of risk and there's no guarantees there then that you are going to be able to sustain what you're thinking about. So what so, about the risk? Um, that will be under the guidance of the endowment committee 
but I would um, strongly expect that with something like this, we would want a conservative, low, no risk. Absolutely. Um, so there's no risk. We don't need to be risky with no. this. This automatically supports mission and ministry beyond our congregation forever. So we would want to. Uh, yeah, certainly you'll get honor less, that. but there's no risk. Correct. And then you will have a certain amount, mm -hmm. which I think is the best thing to do. Yep. We'll say less risk. Yes, we're, we'll choose a less aggressive mm -hmm. investment. Anyone else? Okay. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Heather to review the budget. Okay, and I will ask you for just a minute while I change slide presentations here, so <laughs> bear with me for a second. What is the size of the committee that you're looking for? So in total, we need to have six members outside of Pastor himself. And so right now, I, with myself included, we have three committed members, so we are looking for three more. Okay. Thank you. So now we get to talk about the budget. So I like that picture. Don't you like that picture? That was taken by our new insurance company, Mennonite Mutual, when they were reviewing our property. And I think that is just an awesome picture. We got a couple of those. So our agenda is um, we will open with a prayer. Um, We'll talk a little bit about what's happening at CLC, some preliminary results of where we are with our Who Me stewardship campaign, and then our proposed annual operating plan, and uh, along with that, a salary history, and then uh, a closing prayer. So an opening prayer. Pastor Tim, would you be willing to lead us in a prayer? The Lord be with you. Holy God, your people have gathered in your name. We um, thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwells here in our midst. Bless our conversation as you continue to guide us, as you continue to lead us. Bless us with uh, faithfulness and courage and that sure and certain knowledge that uh, in Jesus you go ahead and invite us to follow. We pray in, in his name. Amen. So first, we're going to talk a little bit about what's happening at CLC. Um, in case you haven't noticed, we have a lot going on around this building all the time. And I want to highlight some of those things because we have a pretty big budget. It's approaching a million dollars that we're going to need to have. Um, and that is so much more than just worship and Sunday school. We have things going on here pretty much every single hour of every day of the week. You would be hard pressed to find a time when there is not some sort of ministry happening in that building and, and that is what we want to support with this budget. One of the biggest things that uh, has happened this past year is reconciling in Christ, and making a very, um, a, a, um, a, making it very clear that we welcome everybody and specifically welcoming certain groups that have often felt excluded by the church. Everyone is welcome here at CLC and we want to do everything that we can to make sure everybody knows that. We spend a lot of time opening our building to serve our community. I'm sure you all recognize the banana boxes from uh, Lutheran World Relief. You will find a whole, um, a whole wall full of those in our activity center right before the Lutheran World Relief trucks come. Every Probably, yes, yes. We have, have so much going on here. Um, we also, you know, most of you know, we host New Creations Men's Center. Um, we may be having a shelter going into our community um, fairly soon here, but for about 10 years now, we have hosted the men from New Creations one night a week 
for about six months every year. We also open our building to Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. I believe we have two different Alcoholics Anonymous groups meeting here. And we have recently opened our building to Gamblers Anonymous as well. So uh, we do a lot of uh, good things in this building and a lot of community support happens around here. And those are just a few of them. There are many, many other things, other groups that happen here. Um, we also ha have quite a bit of fun in this building. Many of you help out with our popcorn fest. Um, that's not just something that raises money for the youth. It's also something that brings our whole congregation together. You will see people in that booth who haven't had kids in the youth group for 20 years or more because it's just so much fun to do this all together. We also um, had our first Mardi Gras celebration this year as a fundraiser. That was a lot of fun. A chili cook-off. We did trunk or treat. We have just all kinds of things happening around here for uh, fellowship and fun with each other. And as many of you know, our biggest ministry is Little Lamb Preschool. We have space for 142 kids. Our current enrollment is just about 138. We're down a couple of kids this year. But um, yeah, we have um, a staff of 13, 13 teachers, assistant teachers, and uh, different types of support for our preschool. We have uh, a lot goes into making that ministry happen, and it reaches a lot of kids. Most of those kids do not attend church here. Many of them attend other, um, other churches in our community, but it reaches 142 kids every year, most of whom do not attend this church. And of course, we worship and grow together. We celebrated the five-year anniversary of our pipe organ this past year with a concert series. Um, I had to put a picture in there of our new sculpture, which I, we have some beautiful artwork in this church, and I hope you all take some time to just notice everything that we have here, because it's just gorgeous, and there's so many nice things. I have to thank Marla for that, because you, you do such a nice job of putting all those up there. Um, yeah, so uh, we uh, also do the typical things that you would expect in the church, but that's not all we do around here. So our Who Me campaign as of this Friday, April 5th, we have a total number of giving units of 220, and at this point we have received 137 of those back. That is a 65% response rate, and as long as I have been here, that's the best response rate I have ever seen. So we did well with that. <laughs> Many of those, about 75%, indicated an increase. Um, we are still not quite where we had hoped to be with our weekly increase. Um, just taking the income that we expect from those statements of intent, we get a weekly increase of about 1440. That's a little shy of the 17, uh, seven, a little over 1700 that we were hoping for. When we add that recurring giving in there, then this is recurring giving from people who have a transaction set up in Subsplash but did not return a statement of intent. So we can be reasonably sure that those are going to continue since they're set up to be a recurring thing in Subsplash. We can expect another $30,000 of that, which brings us a little bit higher, but still um, not quite where we'd like to be. So our total expected is just uh, just shy of 632,000. Okay. All right. And now moving on to our operating plan. To um, support our operating plan, we will need unrestricted offerings of about 900 foot uh, right there. $949,679, okay, that's just unrestricted offerings. We have, um, we expect about $27,000 in, 
what we call direct ministry support. That is um, things that directly support one light item in the budgets. Uh, an example of that would be um, altar flowers or worship supplies. You know, we're going to buy um, the oil for the eternal lamp candle, whether somebody sponsors it or not. If somebody chooses to sponsor it, that goes into the operating budget to support that particular thing. Okay, so that's what that uh, line item is. But uh, we still need almost 950000 to make this budget work. Our biggest budget, um, budget item is our ministry coordination and support. And that includes mostly salaries and benefits of all the, um, all the folks who keep this place running. Um, I will point out it does not include the little lamb salaries or anything that happens with their operating budget. They have a separate operating budget, which we are still working on, so you're not going to see that yet today. Um, but this is just for church staff, church salaries, um, administrative things such as the copier, things like that. Um, next high, highest is facilities for ministry, which is our building, our space that we use for all these things. Um, the biggest number of that is our mortgage. We spend almost $15,000 a month on our mortgage. That is what our current payment is. And uh, it's about 172000 a year to uh, just to keep our mortgage payment. It also includes sal um, utilities, um, maintenance, custodial, things like that are all part of that facilities for ministry budget. Um, our next highest is mission. So our our um, missions such as uh, the budget amounts that we give to our partner organizations, what we send to the Indiana-Kentucky Synod, all of that is um, part of our mission. Uh, worship, we spend a little shy of $19,000 on that. And again, that is um, that does not include our music director salary. That is our, um, uh, that is new music organ maintenance, um, supply pastors, supply musicians, things like that. That is what goes into that budget. And our formation budget is Christian education, confirmation, Sunday school classes, things like that. And we spend about 9000 on that. Are there any questions on the budget? going to ask you to say it here just so we can hear it on the live stream as well. Does the budgeting process or planning process include Vacation Bible School? Yes, it does include Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School is typically also supported by asking the families to kick in a little bit per child. Maybe, um, I, I think it's been about $15 per child in the past with a maximum of $30 per family. Um, of course, we would never deny a child coming to Vacation Bible School because of cost. If a child could not afford $15, we would welcome them anyway. So there, uh, that is part of our budget as well. Any other questions? Just on the previous point about the 65% response this time around, um, I remember uh, the Stewardship Committee has read some books and other things about, and we have a consultant um, that has advised us. I remember they said once that um, larger congregations um, who have a half-time or full-time stewardship person for the whole year on staff, that if uh, with those types of churches without support, uh, they often... Um, the, what they aim for is 65 to 70 percent response. So the fact that we have 65 percent um, is amazing. Uh, one thing that that person would do is, uh, you know, telling the story and uh, sort of communicating all the things that a uh, congregation does. And so the fact we don't uh, have that type of staffing and still got to 65 percent is pretty amazing. So. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, where's over there? <laughs> okay. Well, the 65% is very nice. If my math is correct, you still have a six hundred or a three hundred and forty-five thousand dollar deficit. How do you plan to cover it? Can I speak to that? Yep. Because um, I was trying to think of a way to, um, you know, we're always looking for ways that we understand um, the sixty-five percent. We celebrate that. This, the fact that uh, there were a hun um, uh, the percentage of folks who indicated that yes, this year they um, would like to be able to. Um, uh, support mission and ministry above where they were. Can you go back two slides, okay. actually, yeah. so we can see that again? Um, un, uh, nope, one, that one right there. So what we have is a 75% indicating an increase, and the weekly increase that we see based only on statements of intent is about 74000 just under $75,000. Now, what we see here is um, w another way to think about the total expected there is... Um, uh, the predictable giving, right? So this is income, this is giving that we have uh, some sense of, we can anticipate that this is how people will give. Uh, because either they've indicated that or we're using the very conservative notion <clears throat> measure that if we have not heard, but they have a recurring gift already set up, we hope and trust that they will continue at that level. There are others in our congregation who are not included, who are regularly supporting our congregation. The reality is um, that our uh, giving over the past year was much more than 631 minus the 74 puts us down at uh, 540 or whatever it is, $560,000. Our giving this year is closer to that 900,000. Um, and with the 70, if all other giving stays the same, which is our conservative metric, plus the 75% increase of 1440, that puts us at the point of our, in, of, of our anticipated operating plan. We don't see it here because this is only just a measure of predictable giving. These are the folks who have given us a way to be able to predict it, but it does not capture all the giving that happens and all the generosity of our congregation. There are still 35% of our beloved who um, are giving to the congregation and supporting us at levels that are above this, what we are seeing here. Um, and we do not have a way to, our, our best hope would be that they continue with that. And that's what we've done with recurring giving because we have something we can point to. For our beloveds that have not turned in their statement of intent, another way we could think of this is if we expand beyond just recurring giving and we, uh, a conservative metric we could use would be if everybody had, who has not told us are able to continue at their current rate, then this expands the total expected or predictable, we might say, uh, to this past year's plus the 74,000 that we see an anticipated increase because of the weekly which um, I don't have that figure at my fingers, but I can have, make sure we have that next week when we have this conversation again. And when I looked at this earlier, that puts us right at the point where we are want, needing to be for our operating budget. So one of the ways that we can look at this is say, this is the total predictable. It does not fully capture what we anticipate and pray for over the next year. We can talk about reworking this and try to capture the rest of that. This is that uh, extremely conservative measure uh, for this, the sake of this conversation. Is that helpful at all? Okay. Any other questions? Okay, we will move on then. Um, notice that for this budget, for our 2024-25 operating plan, it says assuming a 0% salary increase. Um, this is our staff. This is the church staff, the, fir the folks who work uh, pretty hard to keep this place running and the folks who carry out many of the ministries and enable many of the ministries that happen in this place. Um, we haven't had an increase 
in a while. Um, do you do you want me to continue to talk or just do you want? Yeah, why don't you? Um, so just wanted to touch on this a little bit. Um, a part of it, my background is professionally, I say, like to say in my real life, I am a um, compensation manager for a finance company. And so when I first took a look at this, and so when I say compensation, I mean from a human resources perspective, the salary and benefits for a total rewards perspective of employees in a company. Um, I was fairly surprised that we hadn't had any increases across the board as most of you typically in your careers you would kind of expect a cost of living adjustment. Um, typically you'd receive some kind of merit increase over on a almost fairly consistently annual basis. Um, I was surprised to realize that in the nonprofit space that is not necessarily the case. So when we are taking a look at the salaries I can very confidently say that our team is sorely underpaid. Um, I think we can all agree that the people that Heather just highlighted on that slide do an incredible job for the church. Um, they are very worth the money that we are paying them and much more. So I do think it's fair, as Pastor pointed out, that we have typically the, the what appeared as a deficit on our predicted giving is not as... Um, is not really what we're looking at, but I do think that it's prudent to include a salary adjustment into our budget this year. So we um, have prepared, we, Heather, has prepared um, some numbers on the next slide that she'll be able to walk through you that show the different scenarios should we include a certain percentage across the board adjustment for the staff at CLC. So I encourage you to think about also the numbers in the market this year. So when I am looking at compensation increases in a public sector, um, increases for salary adjustments typically had hovered around like 2.8, you know, sometimes then had gotten up to three, and last year we're at three and a half percent, and that's average across industries. So when we're looking here at these numbers and I'm seeing zero, um, that hurts my heart a little bit to know that the individuals that are giving so much with it, we're not making sure that they're taken care of. Um, I think we have all felt the impact of inflation and what is happening in the market, and I think it's only fair to pray about how we're making sure that the individuals that are praying so hard for us are being taken care of, experience, experiencing those same environmental factors in their lives and with their families as well. So just think about that as we're taking a look at the numbers that are coming across in the next slides. I'll give it back to Heather to walk through those numbers specifically if that's okay. Um, but, yeah. Thank you, Kate. You're able to articulate that so much better than I can. <laughs> Okay, so this is what our budget would look like if we did a 4% salary increase. Um, our unrestricted offerings would need to go from about 950000 to around 968000 And our operating expenses would be fairly similar. Our ministry coordination and support would go up as well as for our uh, facilities for ministry because that would also include our property staff, our building attendants, uh, property manager, all of those folks would be in there as well. It also might be helpful to look at those side by side. So this is what our operating expenses would look like with a 0% increase and then a 4% increase. Um, comparatively speaking, it's not a, uh, a huge amount. It would be less than $20,000 that we would need to add into our budget. And for those who like the details, this is um, how it would all come out. At a 0% increase, we would actually see a total impact of reducing our costs by uh, $2,300, and that is because of a change in the billing rates for some of our benefits, specifically our um, group life and our disability benefits. Those rates have actually come down in the past year of uh, what we're being charged by our benefits provider. So if we leave everything as is, we would actually have lower benefits costs than what we did last year. It is, it is. <laughs> yep. 
Okay, and at a 4% increase, um, again, it would be an impact of um, 15,862 is what I come up with there. So yeah, our um, obviously salaries would increase um, for our pastors, their housing and FICA would increase as well. That is part of their compensation. Our benefits would also increase because there are things that are dependent on the salary, you know, such as our retirement benefits. If salaries go up, our retirement benefits are going to go up as well. Um, we would also offer that to our custodial staff and our property manager. Also, uh, we would offer an increase to our nursery attendants and building attendants, and those are up in the CLC numbers. Um, our custodial staff and our property manager are separate because they are actually contractors. They are not on our staff. They are contractors who are free to offer their services to other people. And we don't pay them as part of our, um, as part of our employee salary, but we would traditionally offer them some kind of an increase as well as we offer it to our staff. Any questions on that? I assume by using contracted people for those positions, you save money uh, by not having to pay their benefits and so forth. Is that correct? Yeah, um, somewhat. It, yeah, we do not have to pay the employer taxes, the payroll taxes on those folks. Um, we also don't necessarily have enough work for some of those folks to be full-time employees. For example, our custodial staff. Um, they are, I don't know exactly how many hours they're in here per week, but it's not a... Um, Approximately 20 a week, okay. Yeah, so that's not a full-time position. They would wanna be able to offer their services to other folks to have that income. So those contracted folks all provide their own equipment, their own supplies, then they cannot be contracted employees. I don't, the IRS has really changed that and clamped down, so. They, yeah, they, uh, there are, they, you're right, the IRS does crack down on that and they do pay attention to that. Um, there are actually many factors to be considered in that. Um, whether or not the employee uses their own stuff as opposed to provided stuff is one thing. Another thing is whether or not they are free to set their own hours, come in as they please. Are they able to, um, you know, come in and work, you know, at three o'clock in the morning, like our custodial staff sometimes does, as opposed to us saying that you have to be here at precisely 9 a.m. and work till one. That's another big consideration. Um, also, do they offer in fact, offer their services to other people. You know, our custodial staff does have other clients that they serve. Um, our property manager also has a history of serving other folks with his business other than just Christ Lutheran Church. So um, you are correct that there are some very specific rules there. It does get a little muddy, though, and that's... Um, something that I do try to keep tabs on because you're, you're right about that and we have to be careful with that. Um, my professional opinion as a CPA is that we're okay with what we're doing. Yep. How many people are on the custodial staff? Um, that would be one. Uh, um, I, but, yep. Here. Here we go. 
Yeah, so our custodial staff is contracted to rough, work roughly 20 hours a week. Now that's going to vary depending on if preschool is in session or if they're not. All those things vary, but that's about what it works out to. And it's actually one company called Happy Twins. Uh, Michelle Albright is the, the owner of that company and her and her husband provide the actual custodial service. So her husband does more work uh, here than she actually does, but both of them are our custodians here. And I might add too for myself as property manager, the contractor thing, that's by my choice. When I first offered my service to the church, I suggested that I be a separate contractor, so a bit of so the church does not have to pay my benefits, pro, uh, payroll taxes, that kind of stuff, as a bit of a, of a give back, I guess, to the church. Plus, it just makes it a little more easier for the hiring and firing type thing if that would ever come up. So, and uh, yeah, so supplies. I mean, the typical supplies that the church needs <coughs> for soap we'll say or filters for the air conditioner church supplies all that what the contractors will supply some tools church has some i supply some that, that's again by my choice as to what works best for me doing that type of thing Are you sharing the custodial costs and living on the yeah so those costs are wrapped in the 20 hours a week so yes the church that's one of the ministries of the church is they take care of, of the custodial for preschool. I haven't seen that for a while. Sure. So you're going to be more than that. You're just Yeah, so my best estimation, their time during school year is probably spent 60% a little lamb, 40% for the church. <laughs> Those kids tend to make a mess. <laughs> Yeah, and we tend to see them overnight. They're, they come in very late after all of our meetings and such have been done. So if we're, if we're here late, well, we get to greet them. And John is always checking. Just, yeah. What other questions? Any other questions? Okay. But I want to point something out. And okay. for our conversation next week, I'm going to work uh, Heather work with Heather and um, I did some quick math this week while we were in our executive committee conversation. Um, and coming back to that um, projected income, the projected giving, again, what we saw was the very conservative, this is what we feel like we can count on. Um, the additional is the rest of our giving that happens um, because of you, because of our beloved members, that supports us at a particular, uh, that this year is supporting a particular, um, uh, a particular spending plan. And then with that increase of $75,000, that's the $1,400 a, month, a week that we saw, of anticipated indicated increase, when I did the math, it put last year's income plus that $75,000 fit right here. It was at a 2% two per, two increase fit underneath that level. Um, and so really what we are talking about, and I'll make sure that we have these figures, and I'm gonna have Heather check my math in particular, but really the conversation that we're having, thanks be to God, because of the work that we've done, because of your generosity, because of the ways that God works through this place, is actually not the 600,000, but actually is a question of um, the state indicated increase puts us right here at a 2% across the board uh, salary increase. The question then becomes, um, the question before us then is, thanks be to God, could we envision coming here? And the way we could envision that is by more people indicating so with a statement of intent. If you are one of our beloveds who has not turned one in, please consider that. Is it something that, can we anticipate a growth in non-indicated non giving and hope and pray for that, that would put us here uh, from 2%? 
Do we feel like we need to be conservative and stay under and go to 0%? So we'll make sure that we have all of those figures in front of you for that uh, by expanding the ways that we're talking about anticipated giving. Um, and I'm going to have Heather check all my math. Um, but the great news is, again, that 75% increase that brings us about 70, uh, anticipated about $75,000 in additional giving puts us in a really good position that allows us to ask questions that are not as scary as sometimes we've had them. We'll make sure that um, we get those figures uh, put together so that it's uh, as concrete and um, uh, math correct as possible, okay? Any other questions? Three or four weeks ago, I was with some people in town, and one of the, them mentioned <clears throat> that Christ Lutheran Church is in a bad financial position. I didn't have any knowledge at that time to be able to answer that question or even say anything about it, so I didn't. Uh, has anybody else encountered something like that? I've not encountered that, but if you think back to the last meeting that we had, Scott wrapped up what was the end of his time, and I do think that we spoke to possible concerns if we didn't figure out how to pull together. And as Pastor Tim continues to say, we've already had a good number of the investment um, papers coming back to us. And so, you know, talk, talk is talk. You will hear it. I've not heard of it. I don't know where that would have started from. Uh, but I am very happy sitting where I'm sitting now, knowing where we're at and knowing where we can go. And so um, it, it's hard to even have those numbers. Like I said, I'm not a numbers person. I can't recite these numbers, but I know we're real close and we need a little bit more, <laughs> right? So um, we will pull this together. This will be something that's, that once it's tangible, once it's set, um, this will be something that you can certainly, if you need those set numbers, you can take those and, and run with them. Yeah, and I have not encountered that specifically, but I have occasionally encountered um, maybe folks who only have one piece of the picture. You know, somebody might say, that church needs to pay $15,000 a month on their mortgage. Oh, that's awful. But we're supporting that. We make enough money to support that. So, you know, again, I, I have not heard that myself. I don't know where that's coming from, um, we are doing okay. We're making ends meet. We would love to be able to offer a raise if we can do that. Yeah. You know, uh, also as a nonprofit, it's not your goal to make money. It's your goal to make ends meet. You know, if you make too much money, you've either got to spend it on ministry or you've got a, uh, or you could be in trouble because if you start making a profit, you're not a nonprofit anymore. And the IRS does notice things like that. You know, churches tend to fly under the radar a little bit because oh, we're not required to file some of the forms that other nonprofits are required to file. But, you know, it could still catch somebody's attention. So, you know, by definition, we're not supposed to be making money. And that means sometimes it's going to be like that. And that's okay. Any other questions? It is. No problem. My pleasure. <laughs> it is about 20 after. Um, Pastor Tim, may I impose on you again to? The Lord be with you. With you. God, we thank you for gathering us, for your spirit that moves us, for your gifts and grace and blessing that um, pour through us. Thank you for this good conversation, O oh Lord, and as we pray and as we look to your future, we love you, we long to serve you, we are excited for what you are doing and glad we get to be a part of it. Bless us now as we go out to share the good news of your son, Jesus. Amen.
just unable to tell it, hold 